Hey guys, this is Dan, the owner of YourPBFriend.com. We have the ultimate gun review. This series is a new series that we started where we are going to make the ultimate review and paintball on a paintball gun. This is going to be a large video incorporating every part we could possibly think of sticking in a gun review. Don't worry, for those of you who only want to watch a few minutes of the video or our conclusion, we're going to pro, um, provide quick links in the description of this YouTube video so that you can skip to the areas that you want to see and watch exactly what you want. Um, at the very end, we're going to do an overview of the marker. So for those of you that just want to see that little bit of a um, quick review, you can look at that. But I do encourage you, all of you to watch this video. The purpose here is I'm going to be pointing out the areas of the gun which are really nice and then talking about the areas which may be preference to some people versus others. In this video, we are going to compare the Diam 2 to every high-end gun that we have and get our hands on that we think is relevant to this. We're going to compare the shot signature side by side. We're going to do an efficiency test. We're gonna do a sound signature so that you can hear the difference using a professional microphone system and recording that. We're also gonna go through the whole gun and we are going to do a complete uh, tech teardown of the gun as we talk through and walk through uh, each different part of the gun that may be new, innovative, and has changed, as well as the unboxing to start. So enjoy the ultimate gun review, Die M2. So we have a brand new Die M2 here and we are going to get into the unboxing. Right off the bat you can see that the case is different. It's a uh, hard case with a uh, fabric material, real nice zipper. You get the nice uh, cardboard plastic that has all their different logos and terms on it. I'm going to try to get these this off. This packaging, the outer packaging doesn't really matter and it's kind of a uh, take and throw away type of thing. We're gonna toss that to the side. <laughs> you got their nice like glued on jewel emblem and then impressed in the case, we have uh, the die logo. I think this case is a huge improvement over the previous years, as you see right here, as it just never felt like the gun could fit properly in the case or which way to put it got a nice bungee uh, handle it does come with a die sticker but I took that off first thing I see when I open up the case is the things can move around a little bit that is something I'm not a huge fan of if you see right here um, the lube has fallen out in a barrel um, flip that over they don't seem to fit very uh, snug in the spots although they do have a spot for everything you just kind of need to uh, know to open the gun first. This uh, section does have Velcro in three spots. I think they should have put it in four, but Velcro in three spots to hold it down. Um, this chart right here is beautiful. It's actually an O-ring chart. It tells you how to control it, what the colored lights mean. Um, each o-ring also has their colored o-ring indicator as well so if you have that you can do it um, some simple uh, teching and adjustments to the gun um, and, or which way this is uh, the board adjustments right there that is the nicest uh, cheat sheet I have seen on a paintball gun and it's built into the case inside you have a little startup guide card the warranty here's the sticker I talked about you have the Die M2 barrel sock. This is nicer than the previous barrel socks, which were almost the same thing, just didn't have any printing on it. At least this has printing. Not a big deal, it works. It's just not a super nice barrel sock. This is a charging cable. The gun charges via micro USB. You could also charge your phone with this now. Um, and this is a cable that you can use to update the software on your board. I'll show you how to use that later. You have a nice parts kit that has some eye pipe detents and a bunch of o-rings and some screws also charred inside of it 
They come with two barrel backs now. Two barrel backs is something that a lot of people have asked for. It's a 688, which is unmarked. And then you have a 684, which does have the marking. We out here in California mainly use the 688, 689 stock barrels most of the time. But for a lot of players who want to bore size and are using smaller paint, the 684 is a very nice touch and that's nice. Thank you, Dai, for including that. You have the standard ultralight barrel tip in silver. And then you have their Dye Sleek Lube, um, which works really good as well. Um, this actually comes with the Dye Multi Tool, which sits right in here. Um, I have actually taken that out when I was uh, playing with the gun beforehand and didn't put it back in, but it does come with a very nice Dye um, Swivel Tool. And this area right here is actually your Customer Support Passport. This Customer Support Passport flips out and it is a USB. It's pretty much just a thumb drive. It has your manual and your quick startup guide loaded on it. It also has some wallpapers for you to put on your computer and you can uh, upload on it to change your boot menu startup guides. And so you can uh, use that. It's pretty much a USB flash drive. And it's nice that it has a little leather carrying spot so you don't lose it. And like I said, it's a good, good, strong case. It is a, one of the nicer cases in paintball. A lot of companies are coming out with these now. It's a little bigger than maybe I would like, although it doesn't seem too ac excess in size because it fits the gun and it does have a lot of information. Again, my only gripe, which is me just having a gripe, is that it doesn't have something there to hold it down and hold the things in place. But again, I think this is a real nice case compared to the previous ones beforehand. So with that unboxing, we are going to get into the full tech and breakdown review. Okay, so the Die M2, we are going to go over everything that has changed and new on the gun while we take it all apart completely. To start, I have a DM15 in my hands. The DM15 die came with the DM14 and they make, made some good changes. They made it bigger, it was a uh, gas through for once. And that did have a good impact on it, but people still felt like, die, you needed to do more. Very heavy, bulky gun. The 15, they fixed some small minor details and made it a little thinner. But here with the 15, I'm gonna point out to you real quickly the gripes that people have had. The big thing that we are gonna be talking about in this review is a lot of die fans have felt that Although loving the fuse bolt engine and how a DM shoots, they feel like there hasn't been a lot of innovation and change done to the marker platform since 2009. Uh, things like an OLED board and other things that fans have been screaming for. And I'm gonna point out to you some of the areas that the DM15 is lacking um, and then show you how they've been fixed in the M2. So with this DM15 right here, the first thing is this is a very heavy gun. It's one of the heavier guns in paintball. Um, over the years, they seem to have been getting heavier and heavier. You have the bolt. This bolt is easier to take out than most, and um, than most of the DM15s I hold. Most of them you have to, as you see, I really had to pull on it. Most of them you have to stick your finger in there and push the bolt forward to get it out. So the O-rings kind of stick beforehand. Uh, the feed neck was something that people would strip and break this little feed neck screw right here all the time and they did have a lot of problems with that. Uh, the grips are just kind of bulky. The foregrip is a little bulky there. People didn't like. The trigger, the trigger has a spring and at, uh, most people I know felt that the spring even on the lightest tension setting was still too heavy and they would just take the screen spring and get rid of it just bouncing on the micro switch which they feel would be too light. Um, this airport ASA for years, I personally have not been a fan of it with many other people because it's really small and to, uh, to activate with a normal pressure tank, you can wind up breaking this and it was real hard. I saw a lot of people just lock it, keep it on, and then screw their tank in just as if it wasn't an on-off. 
So that was difficult, and especially using a Ninja Ball Reg, uh, the new Pro Regs with more flow, it was really hard to uh, change that. If you notice, there's a lack of an OLED board. For years, uh, die players and fans have wanted an OLED board so you didn't have to count the LED lights on the gun. Um, those are the big changes or big, big problems that they had with it. Another um, problem is the eye pipe. You see it's kind of hard to pull the eye pipe out and it's a very thin, easy to break. I could probably actually crack it if I squeezed it in my hands. And so pe players are feeling, or uh, were playing with it and it was cracking in their guns from either over tightening the barrel or um, as I can't get it back in or trying to get it back in or other issues like that. And then people felt for a $1,500 gun um, when this was released, the PGAs were actually $1,650, that it just wasn't enough gun for the buck. You know, they want extra barrel backs or other things, things to be fixed and changed. So the DM15s are now $1,000 and staying there, which is really good for $1,000, but not quite a $1,500 marker. So I'm gonna put this aside and we are gonna get into the die M2. So I'm gonna start from beginning to end or just kind of go through how it all works and how it changes. One thing I didn't mention on the DM15 is people didn't like the efficiency either. The efficiency on the M2 is uh, really good actually and you'll see that in our efficiency test, but I'll get into it. So first thing that you notice when you pull this gun up is it is super light. They actually changed this, I think it's one pound 15 ounces. It's uh, I think three or four ounces lighter than the previous DM15, which you will see in our weight and ergonomics comparison. It also is much thinner in the hands. You notice right away that it has had a lot of the weight taken off and the grip in the hands is just much thinner. The hourglass frame, they actually, on this ultralight frame, they actually thinned out so it is even smaller here. A lot of kids with real small hands and even some girl players with smaller hands were grabbing it and saying it felt really good. So the grips have changed. The foregrip is shorter. It's about a half an inch shorter than uh, the previous guns, which mean you're not going to clip it as much, some people noted. Um, I didn't think that was a problem, but it does feel really good. I like how my pinky sits right under there when I hold it like this, kind of has a spot for it. And sticking your hand underneath, your hand kind of reaches underneath this ridge and fix over. So the new style of grips is very nice. The feed neck, they redesigned the feed neck and this feed neck screw is a little different. I'm actually just taking off with my thumb. And so hopefully that's not going to strip on people. It's just a cap that screws in and uh, screws it on actually take apart that feed neck for you. I take a flathead screwdriver in between and you just kind of separate it without scratching the anode and it pops off. And then this area can actually uh, twist off. I'm not gonna take it off for you right now. It's pretty tight, but it can twist off so you can change it. And then this area swivels around. This fits hoppers very nicely. Um, the spire, I didn't have any problems with the spire or the R2 as I have sitting next to me or the previous rotor or any of those. So that is really nice, a hopper that actually clamps or a feed neck that clamps and does its job on a hopper. Not every manufacturer out there has that. And hopefully this lasts with the longevity. The eye pipe on this gun, they actually made to be 60% thicker. If you see here, it's a blue uh, color to show that it's different. And it is much stronger as you can see me squeezing it here. That is supposed to add to the longevity of the uh, life of the eye pipe. Also, when you stick it in, you notice it goes into place way easier, almost uh, too easy because it comes out with the hands. This, I think, is really nice. Um, part of my concern is maybe if you take your barrel off in the middle of the field to swab it, this could possibly fall out. I didn't have any problems with it falling out there. 
um, especially if you do stick your swab in the barrel afterwards and pull it out you will pull the eye pipe out with you so just keep that in mind you don't want to do that um, but being much stronger is really good the trigger on this when we get into it I'll show you it's a magnetic trigger it's not any longer a spring trigger and you can adjust that or even remove the magnet that's nice this is something I really like you can just pull it out right away the bolt system does come with the Billy wing bolt um, it is way easier to remove in and out right out of the box we're able to just grab it and just pull uh, that is a big significance for those of you who've owned the DM15 and 14 you know how big of a deal that was so that is really nice uh, it is a lot lighter and you can bring your hand actually up farther some people said they really like that your hand fits up farther a big area that they fixed was this airport this airport uh, ASA is much stronger some people are asking specifically the ninja pro v2 regs with the ball regs can this turn it on and off i was using one this past weekend at 800 psi and no problem just on off on off very nice and simple a fat oled screen i'm going to turn that on i don't believe the frame rate matches with our cameras as you see it says yourpbfriend.com on it um, I don't believe the frame rate matches with the camera so you probably can't see it very well we will do a full video showing you all the things you can set on that and how to uh, set those but you can uh, turn it on and off it has a very nice but um, joystick to change this back plate right here I've used this gun for about three weeks and this back plate has started fading from the silver to a uh, dull yellowish color that's not the nicest I wish that jewel wouldn't fade um, but it did the uh, screen I talked with die they said they're giving a one-year warranty on the screen I asked specifically like can this get shot they said it should be able to take shots uh, they do expect that some of them will get broken um, if shot really hard or real close uh, or the wrong angle is shot too much something like that but they do a one-year warranty on them and those screens are replaceable off the board um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the grips off and we are going to go and get into the gun. So the grips here, you need to pull up. I don't like the die grips myself because I always find them hard. People who know how to use them manage to uh, get these off every time easily. You get your hand here you pull it back and then you pull it forward whenever it's a new grips they are harder after a little while they're easy the inside of this grip is sealed very well and it's a nice thick plastic to protect the screen so that doesn't that it doesn't break very gummy and good feeling grips in the hands if you see it is a rechargeable battery now the battery just unplugs and you can pull it off I do not like rechargeable batteries I didn't like them with or don't like them with the Lux I don't like them with the M2 they say that you're supposed to get some really good battery life out of it I just would prefer to rule out the possibility of maybe the battery's bad and I can't tell so being able to use a 9 volt battery is what I prefer but a lot of people find these is really good and it seems to be a decent battery. Make sure when you get the gun first, there is a little red band around it and it says charge your gun fully before using it. That is to increase the longevity of the battery. You charge it all the way up and then you can drain it down and use it. Um, so that's real nice. The uh, foregrip, I'm gonna show you how to take that off. Let me grab the Allen keys real quick. So with these Allen keys set, you want to take your allen key and take out this little screw on the foregrip before you take it off otherwise you'll look silly yanking on it with the original uh, DM 14 and DM 15 it was really hard to get this grip off you would have to take a credit card and stick it inside and break it free I remember at the die DM 14 tech class when it came out I was wrestling with it in the class for like five minutes until Billy wing came over and showed me the trick but these things 
just come right off. That's really cool. They clip on, they don't come loose and that screw holds it in place, but it does pop right off when you need it to. And this is where you have the regulator. You have your LPR and your HPR. The uh, M2 actually operates at uh, quite a bit. They said 20% less fire or uh, less operating pressure and 20% less dwell. So that is actually very uh, significant change in pressures. It also has dual transducers on the that you can read out on the sp the screen. Those are digital pressure sensors, and what they do is they tell you what your LPR is set out and what your HPR is set at, so you can actually fine tune a DM. Those of you who've owned DMs before, you know that fine tuning it can make a huge difference onto how the gun shoots and performs, and now you can actually digitally know what the gun's at to be able to fine tune that. That's great. The uh, frame is actually wireless, so you can remove the frame. What you gotta do is there's one screw in the back here, and then there's one screw in the front. The uh, die multi-tool that it comes with is a very nice set. It has all the tools so you don't lose it, but it's really hard when you're getting in an area like this to use. So I suggest when you're taking apart the frame to use some loose Allen keys like I have right here. Let's see? Alrighty, you gotta go until it's all the way off. And boom, there you go. So one screw goes in the back of the gun and comes up like this. The other one clips into the front right here and you screw the, through the hole. If you see, there is no wires that connect the frame to the body. So you can pull apart your gun without worrying um, about it. Using this top part first, you have your solenoid. You have a little red sticker here that says IPS, that's internal pressure system, warranty void if seal is broken. So we're not gonna get into that. There's a screw right underneath that. That is for your uh, sensitive pressure plate. This uh, little uh, um, wire right here is actually going into your eyes to the um, through the gun. And then this one is to your solenoid. I will take up off your solenoid really quickly. I believe this is a Mac valve noid that uh, Dai has been using for a long time. Their solenoids have been proven to work really well and last a long time. So it is good that they kept that, that they kept that solenoid into play. Change is good, but only when change is needed because uh, something that's rely been reliable for a long time is really nice. So this comes out, the solenoid pops off. There you can see your gasket and you see your spool pack on the inside. You can actually get into here. I'm not going to service the, uh, the solenoid in this video. We do have Brett the Tech videos that show you how to uh, tech solenoids and so on in this you really don't need to take it off but there's the gasket in case you had a problem with that you have your upper board right here your eyes you can unplug in the uh let me see if i can pull the eye wires out with the pick the eyes just kind of tuck right underneath there it looks like the eyes would be a little difficult to change especially that you don't want to get into your uh especially that you don't want to have to get into removing that uh, warranty sticker. So the eyes are going to be able to pull out, but I can tell you they are going to be a little bit of pain. Die, the die wires have always been really difficult for me personally to put in the eyes. They sit in the little uh, rubber track on the inside of here, and that's always difficult to change. But the good thing is they're good quality eyes, and with the uh, eye pipe system, you don't need to change them too often. So that's real nice. Your solenoid will go back in like this. You wanna push that side in first. Your eye wire or your solenoid wires tuck into this little groove that they have built right here. And then you can put the two screws back on. Whenever you are tightening down anything with two screws, 
you want to tighten one until it starts giving a little resistance and then you want to switch to the other and that uh, prevents you from tightening down and crimping it at a uh, tilt and it uh, tightens it down evenly so whether it's the tires on your car or the solenoid screws in your gun that's how you want to do it Alrighty, you see this, these boards, uh, most companies now are using this system and what it is, it's a spring contact system. These are springy and these contacts will go and they'll hit right against this plate. And because they're sprung, they're always going to stick up far enough and you can compress them, but they're not going to bend as having to fit from a male into a female connector. So that is a very reliable system and it's been used for many applications outside of paintball for years and now the paintball industry is using them. The air goes through the uh, um, through the frame here, and it comes right up out of this hole, and that's a nice thick seal O-ring, this bright green one, and that connects right into this hole over the main body, and it's going to be a very good seal as well. So that is a very good uh, system with your trigger. If you see right here, let me grab this other pick. You have your magnet right here, and what it does is, the, or this is a, a magnetic stop, your magnet is actually in the back of your trigger right here, and it touches this. There's a little grub screw in here that you can reverse out to make it less magnetic tension or put it closer for more magnetic tension. A magnet versus a spring, when it's right next to it, it is much tighter for the initial pull, and then it, uh, as it gets farther away, you get less of that force. Um, it is still very nice. It is not my favorite trigger, but those of you who uh, would pull out the uh, spring beforehand, I think you'll really like that. You have some adjustments. This one is actually your trigger pin that holds the trigger in place. This one right here, if you see this spot, this prevents how far you can push it back. If you push it here, it, if you screw it in, it can't be pulled as far back, but if you reverse it out, then you can actually uh, pull it out much more and it's tapered so that it works. Um, this one right here is uh, right underneath. I can't show it to you, maybe, maybe right here. So it's the same system right underneath here. And so that's the second screw and that uh, controls how far forward it goes. So the top one controls how far back you're able to bring it. The other one controls how far forward the trigger can go. You also have these two adjustment screws and what they do is it actually changes the angle of your trigger um, because with these reach triggers, you can adjust how you want the trigger to sit farther grasp or shorter grasp, which is really nice with the reach triggers. You have uh, this screw right here. Um, this is the grub screw. You put it through the middle and you adjust that and that, in that uh, changes your tension. And then finally, you have this screw little black screw on the outside and what that does and this pulls out the magnetic uh, return base place so if you see this is uh, the grub screw and this is what when it's closer to the magnet it cre creates more tension and when it's farther it's away or you can pull it out and you're running the trigger without any uh, any tension at all. I'm gonna put that back in. It's easier to put back in because the magnet holds it in place from the trigger. And then I am holding the bat it on the back with my finger as I screw it in on this side with my hand. Actually, got to uh, hold it strong in place. 
why it goes all the way down. Don't strip out that screw. It seems to work as you hold the trigger forward, which creates the tension on it to hold that thing in place. So what I would do is I would hold this in tension forward. It keeps the uh, thing from moving and then you can tighten it down. And there you go. Now you got the magnet back in the trigger. We're gonna take apart the board real quick. Uh, the board is not as simple as other boards are to just pull out. There's a lot of high quality electronics in here and you want to make sure you do it right. If you just dig in there and start ripping apart the board, you're going to have some problems. So the first step when taking apart your board is you want to get these screws on this contact pad out. One, two, I like to bring needle nose pliers, small screwdrivers, and the proper picks and tools so that you're not forcing anything. You want it all to come out smoothly. On the inside here, you will see that the main board clips in with little pins into that contact system. Um, I'm gonna take a non-sharp surface and push, and it pushes this out. There's the little, uh, female adapter that I was telling you about. You can set this gently to the side. And there's the male adapter, those uh, prongs there. You don't wanna bend those. Once you get that out, you can use the screws to take out this board. There's one. These screws are all the same size. Um, from the little contact pad and to the board, so that's very nice. Another one down here. And if you see, this pulls it out. Now again, you can't just jerk this out because that white wire actually clips into this part of the board. Um, there is a black screw in here that I'm touching and that black screw screws into this console system to keep it from pulling out. So I'm going to unscrew that. As you can see, it's wiggling about. And then you can slide out the console and the joystick pad. And then gently, without tugging on that white wire, you pull out the joystick pad. So here's your little joystick pad. The back end of the joystick is uh, you can move around really easily and that clips right into here. And that's nice. The screen does have a thick plastic protector over the screen. You can kind of see underneath it with padding on the edges for impact. And then if you can see underneath, there is a uh, nice pad underneath the screen as well. So this screen is pretty beefy. To take it off, um, Die asks that you don't take it off, but to take it off, there is little plastic clips and you can pull it out. It's kind of like taking off the area on your cell phone. Um, again, let's try not to take that off. Hopefully none of you guys need to see this. Uh, contact a Die Tech or contact Die Paintball themselves before any of that happens. Um, to put back together, there's a little notch. You're gonna put put that back in. Let's see. Once that slid into place, you don't want to catch the leaf on the trigger, and you don't want to break those pins. So be careful with those pins, please. You're gonna take this while holding the screen in. I'm gonna put this. Uh, little console all the way in for the joystick pad and the joystick is going to clip into its spot you can confirm that on the other side that it is into spot 
and then you're going to take this black screw and you're going to screw it in to hold down the console. If you don't do that, the console will fall out again and that will or will fall out on you and it won't be good. Don't over tighten it. It is screwing into a little plastic. The console is a plastic part and if you do over tighten that, you can break it. All these electronics and components can be done gently and just so they're snug. When you're done attaching the main board, remember you have this little board as well. You need to be very careful with it. You don't want to break those pins. So I'm going to set it in with my fingers where it's properly and then I'm going to look on the inside to make sure to line them up. It needs to line up perfectly. You don't want to bend those pins. one like always I said you tighten one to where it's snug you tighten the other and then you finish off the first one again alrighty that's the board you don't want to take that apart guys there should be almost no reason don't be too afraid about how difficult that board is. It is a very complex piece of machinery, but you shouldn't need to take it out almost ever. You can put the battery back in here. I hope they sell replacement batteries in the future, um, or I even mentioned maybe if they had a wiring harness that could go to a nine volt, I'm not sure that would work at all. There is uh, there's some things with maybe a nine volts too high, but I just wanted to see that. Um, this is the, this is the micro USB, it charges off of your cell phone. The nice thing about it charging off your cell phone is that you can use any cell phone charger in your car. Um, almost everybody has that micro USB charger and that's real nice to have a hold of. The ASA Airport, they said has 20% more flow to it. It is adjustable. What you're going to do is you're gonna grab the right sized Allen key And you can actually do this through this hole while your grips are on. And you can adjust and loosen it, allowing you to slide it back and forth to what is comfortable for you. To take it off all the way, there is a grub screw down here. Which you have to take off as well. And that's kind of a set to get it to stop from uh, coming off all the way. And then here is your track made so that you can adjust it. There's an O-ring seal that you can replace. Very simple. Having that uh, adjustable airport ASA is really nice. And the fact that they fixed it so that it's so easy to take on and off now is a huge plus. On the inside of the ASA, there is two holes. You can take it and they twist. You don't need, you don't just pull out, but you can twist off the ASA. And there's a few O-rings. You have your pin. Your pin is uh, almost identical. There is one O-ring inside there. I believe it's a 006, but it is on your die chart, I think. So if you're having an ASA leak, that's where it would be, or this blue one right here. To put back together is uh, pretty simple. Um, you stick it through there. There is one side a little bit bigger than the others. You can see it's almost identical, 
so you'll notice that you're putting it together right as it doesn't fit through all the way. So push the side that goes through, pinch back in these little holes. You want to put some grease on that o-ring and then the one in, um, put it on liberally and that will get on the one inside. You're going to twist it until it's snug. And that's your airport ASA maintenance. Very simple and easy to do. We're going to get into the top of the gun. Okay, so the regulators on the gun. The regulators have, they die said it's a 20% less operating pressure and that the ready regulators have been redesigned to be a lower pressure. Um, when we get into this, you want to be careful. I prefer that you guys don't maintain regulators at the field, especially the die regulators, because they use the uh, disc method for shims. The discs are nice because they are so reliable um, and have proven to give really good uh, results, but they're really easy to lose the amount of shims. So getting into your HPR, which is down below, you would use this Allen key. You pull out their spool pack. I point it up as you can see because I don't want them to fall out. A shim is already trying to fall out. Um, as you can see here. And this is the proper, the proper stack. Now, with the shims, a lot of people go in there and they take apart their gun for the first time and they go, I only have 11 shims or 10 shims or 12 shims and my manual says 13 or 12 or whatever it is. And the problem here is the shims are all based on um, the each individual regulator. So although let's say 12 is the standard, some do come with 11 stock or some come with 13 and that's the way that regulator is made to be. Now, if yours does come with 13 and you take one out to make it 12, you're going to have a bad time and have issues. So there is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 shims in this one. And if you can look here, that is the order that they're supposed to go in. I'm going to set these nicely to the side. Again, I cannot express, express enough. Please do not lose that shim stack. Um, oh, 12. I was wrong. It comes with 12. Let's see if any more are hiding in there. Nope, that's 12. So, what I like to do when pulling out a piston, you do not want to scratch it. So, needle nose pliers are one of the only ways to get them out, but you don't want to uh, scratch the surface of it, and I'll show you why. So, I prefer that people don't yank on them with needle nose that's why I put the rag in there and that rag actually uh, stops it from scratching the surface we have a Brett the Tech video that shows you how regulators work so I'm not going to explain to you how they work but if you see inside of this uh, this is called your piston inside this uh, seat your piston seals on an o-ring right there and your shim stack goes in between if your uh, piston head which I believe this is stainless so it doesn't go bad quickly, but if it gets scratched up, you can permanently make it so it will start leaking and not work. These two O-rings in the back are made to really beef it up. And then there's one here, your regulator adjuster seat. Let's see if I can take this apart right now. All right not pulling it apart right now. Um, we will do this in our Brett the Tech video, but there is your regulator adjuster, which goes in and it meets uh, with your, it's a reg seat on the end and it meets with the uh, top hat or this uh, piston and it meets right there and that's what adjusts the pressure. We will show you in the video how to do it, but you take it apart, put a little bit of dowel 33 lube. You want to only tech these uh, every, ah uh, shoot, 20 to 40 cases. Um, regulators last a long time and so you don't need to do it like you're doing your bolt system and just lube them all the time it's actually not not necessarily good for it but there again 
I'll show you how it goes together. Die is calling this a cartridge, and I know for the team player packs, they can come with these pre-made cartridges. So if you're at the field and you're a team and your gun's just not shooting, you can grab the extra cartridges they have pre-built, throw it in your gun, adjust it to velocity, and get on the field and start playing. So that is really nice. That's the inside of your rig. It's empty inside here. There you go. And we throw it back there and then screw it on. And notice I did all that without adjusting the reg seat, which is in there. So it should be shooting the same velocity. Although after you maintain your reg, you always, always, always want to bring your gun over a chrono and test it before you uh, get on the field because the velocity can change. You change something you didn't know or the gun um, isn't, uh, something's not sealing properly, allowing full pressure to go through the gun. You wanna be careful with that. We don't wanna hurt people by shooting too hot and you wanna have just some safe uh, gameplay and not damage your gun either. So again, this is the LPR, same Allen key. It pulls out and it is very cis similar. Inside your gun, if you see there is one O-ring in there that you should almost never need to change. Put a little bit of grease on it here. Um, this whole thing comes out. It works the same way. This is your piston. There's a shim stack in there that's really small. And then you have your top hat. Again, we're gonna get into this into the Brett the Tech video where he's gonna tech the M2 uh, system. But this new, uh, this new LPR is supposed to have much better flow rate. The LPR controls how much pressure pushes the bolt forward and back, while the high pressure regulator controls how much pressure is inside your operating chamber or goes into the system. And so that's where you have a balance. You don't want your gun smacking the ball. And so if you are having issues with, uh, with velocity or especially consistency, you want to tune those regulators together. Hopefully we do a tuning video sometime on how to tune that gun with the new internal pressure systems. It is uh, way easier to tune your gun than it was ever beforehand. So that's real nice. I'm going to put the frame back on the gun and then we're going to look at the bolt system. Before I put on this foregrip right here, I wanna point out to you two real quick holes. There's this screw and this screw. Those are um, grub screws that are just for air transfer tubes. It's how they uh, go into and they drill out the areas. You do not need to take those apart. So please uh, do not take those holes. They should be sealed and locked down and you don't want to mess with those. So that is the same with these two ones in the front or three of them in the front as well. So those are all just milling holes and they're not to be messed with. Your grip. Right here, it has a little tab, slides up, put in your screw. And boom, you're tight. So getting into the fuse bolt system. The fuse bolt comes with a Billy wing bolt. That's awesome. No longer is it for sales and upgrade, but you can actually Buy the gun and it comes with it directly it is a polished bolt billy wing if you ask who is that billy wing guy anyways he's the head designer for uh um for die and he was an ironman player a professional paintball player you'll actually see some videos he did and he's a real nice guy how the fuse bolt works is you have constant air coming into the gun from your hpr and it goes in through these holes. It fills up inside this chamber and around this whole area and it sits at rest. When your bolt is driven forward, your solenoid um, releases air um, that's holding it back from here. It's holding, a, there's an O-ring right here we call the sail. It releases air and moves air back here which pushes the bolt forward. When the bolt stem passes this area, as you see the O-ring, the orange O-ring just pushed through, it turns off the air to the chamber. So now this air chamber is locked and the air chamber starts pushing air 
through this area and through the inside of the bolt. Then what it does is at the proper time, it reroutes the air, pushes the bolt back, seals off this chamber so that no more air can be dumped, and opens up the chamber to refill with the constant pressure. This is a classic spool valve design. A spool valve uh, pretty much uses the balance of air on one side or the other, um, pushing on two surfaces. And if it's pushing at the same thing, when it releases here, it shoots forward. When it drains this and pushes here, it releases back. Um, there's a few O-rings in it, and I'll take it apart and show you. This is the back half of your chamber. You wanna keep these O-rings, they're mainly static. You just want to keep them uh, moist. They don't have a lot of job other than just sitting there and sealing and not a lot of pressure moving back and forth on them. You have this O-ring in here. This O-ring is important. What that does is it actually seals off on this body, the air from the chamber as this moves back and forth, because once it moves forward, now it's no longer sealed and the air from the chamber can dump through the gun. So you want to lube that, take some uh, lube, put it on your pinky and rub it on the inside. You also want to take some lube and put it on this O-ring on the inside as well and make sure it's moist. You see it has grease because that one seals off on this area. Before you take this bolt head out, you want to push and uh, do it better with a rag. You want to push this O-ring together and slide it off. Oh, as I just dropped it. But you pop that blue O-ring off and then this bolt can slide freely through here. This is your bolt cell O-ring. Bolt cell O-rings do have a lot of significance. If you air up your gun and it sounds like it's leaking and venting from your solenoid through the grip frame, that doesn't mean your solenoid's damaged most of the time. It usually means the cell O-ring's damaged. The solenoid pushes air on one side or the other, which pushes it. It's like a sail on a boat. When air is on this side, it pushes it forward. When air is on this side, it pushes it back. These two brown O-rings are not actually seal O-rings at all, they're just bumpers. They stop it from smacking into the back metal of here, so it stops there and stops it from smacking forward. But that uh, red O-ring is of great significance. It needs to be lubed properly, so make sure it has lube so it seals. And if your gun is leaking, that is the number one first O-ring you want to check. And then you want to check some of these as well and then your inner can o-rings. You have one last inner can o-ring and that is this front one. You want to keep lubed. That seals on the bolt. If you stick your finger into the bolt and air is coming around the bolt in the chamber, it's usually this o-ring is bad. If it's coming through the bolt chamber, then you could be having uh, issues with this bolt or you could be having issues with or that O-ring or may, mainly this O-ring. So that is some quick uh, troubleshooting there. So don't be too, uh, too over worried about the O-rings in here. They're not too complex. It's a basic design that's been around a long time. Die has the O-rings color coded so that you can know which O-ring to put where. These black O-rings on the outside after lubing it, if you can see here, my hands are uh, shiny and I just throw whatever lube I have left on the outsides of them and that keeps it uh, nice and um, lubricated. Gives them some good longevity. This screw right here is just the back part of the button. You don't really need to take this apart but it is spring loaded when you do, so be careful it will launch out. That is a simple, no seal things like two uh, ballpoint pen springs. And then you can stick this back and that locks it into place very well. And then you could actually uh, take it and screw this back half of off of this part but there's really no need to get behind there um, but that's the fuse bolt standard uh, fuse bolt technology now comes with the billy wing bolt and uh, operates at a lower pressure this gun actually gets really good efficiency and you'll be able to see that in our efficiency video and see how soft and quiet this gun shoots now so be sure to watch those videos and stay tuned put this gun back together. I'll throw the bolt tip on it later. 
clips right back in and it's all together. And that is the main basic teardown of the die M2 marker. We will get into the board settings, the ergonomics. This is your little dust plate to charge your USB cable. We'll show you how to change the screen, um, the boot up screen and mess with the joystick board and all that coming up shortly. All right, guys, we are going to get into the section where we... Hey! Shh. All right, guys, we're gonna get into the section where we go through um, how to program the board, and I show you how to change out the display. So I'm gonna start by showing you the display. I'm gonna turn the gun on. You hold it down for two seconds if you see your PV friend shield. And then I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna to explain to you really quickly how to upload it. It's super easy. You have this uh, cord, and this is the programming cord. It is a USB on one side and a micro USB on the other. Take this little USB latch, and you can plug this thing right in there. That's where you charge it as well. Your passport owner's manual from Die. This is a USB card. This thing flips out and it's what it is. It's just a simple USB card. It has on it the startup guide and the manual and then some backgrounds for your computer. Um, I'm gonna try to post on the screen right now, but what you do is if you see in the owner's manual, there is an area that tells you how to upload it. It says you need to convert it to a BP I file, I believe, a BIP file, and that is real simple. It gives you a link to a website where you can upload any image from your desktop computer um, to a BIP and then transfer it onto the file. So it says, I believe it's a 160 by 160 megapixels or 110 by 110. It's right here on the page. And then what you do is you plug this into your computer, you convert it to a BIP file, you put it on here, then when you're done, you're gonna take this and you're gonna plug it into your USB port, and then you're going to turn your gun on. Hold it down. It will say upgrade cable connective. The green highlighted area is what you can do. You can upload, update your software if your software is ready for an update, or you can update boots, custom boot screen. You press that in, you can switch to the yes, by switching side over on the joystick, press yes, and as you see, it starts loading. It'll only do one BIP screen at a time, so it will automatically do it. It says complete, remove USB. You can go ahead and remove the whole thing now, and you can turn it off. And boom, just like that, you have a, that's how you update the software and how you update the screen super easy your pb friend shield on the die m2 all right i'm going to zoom in here and we are going to uh look more closely on the screen all righty so with the screens you've seen a little bit of a flickering that's just because it's a different frame rate on the screen than it is on the camera we're filming at 60 frames per second um it's not actually look like that in real life it is uh perfectly clear you have your joystick right here in the back. You can push it in, you can do it left, right, down, and up. In your manual, on your or in your case of your gun, there is a cheat sheet to enter it. Um, there's a cheat sheet on how to control the board. What I'm gonna do is to just walk you through the, me the main thing. So the first thing to do is you hold down the um, joystick for two seconds, that turns the screen on. If you hold the joystick down for two seconds, it turns to where the eyes are off. Hold it down for a second again, and it turns on. If you uh, tap to the left, let's see. If you system check, you just tap it to the left and it tells you your dwell is at 15, your anti bull stick is on, PSI, low, high, there's no air in it, rate of fire, the shots for this time. You can press it again to switch back, so that's really simple. You just tap to the left and you can see all the system of the gun. Alrighty. 
and then let's go back. All right. Um, if you tap to the right, you can do the game timer. Let's see if I can tap it to the right. Alrighty, so I didn't get it to tap to the right. If you hold it up, it enters profile selection display. And there you see you got your profiles and you can walk through them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the factory. So that's how you can factory reset. We're gonna go into one. You're gonna actually press it down to get into it. Now you got your performance settings. You got your performance settings, your data settings, your training mode, and you can exit. So we're gonna go into performance settings first. You just press it, there's your game clock. You can change the time by going up and down. You would press the button in once, now you can select it and you can move up and down, so for the time you want. Press the button in again to deselect it. You can move to the next thing, trigger sensitivity. You have your rate of fire, your firing mode. It's pretty cool, the three round burst shots, it kind of shows what it is. Your dwell, ABS, ABS wait time, eye delay, and you can exit there. I'm gonna press exit. Now you can go to the data settings and you can change the name of it actually um, by pressing the button in and then scrolling through the name. I'm gonna scroll the next thing, select play mode screen. There's two options. You got option two, which is a killer. It says killer01, an idea of name. There's another option one. You would scroll down to get there. Option three, I liked option two. Alrighty. You got select boot screen, and that's where you have the option. There's the your PB friend shield. Scroll down, die logo, another die logo. M2, the M2 logo, and boom, your people friend shield again. Press the button in to move out of there. You can do your shot counter. You can reset this shot counter. There's a all time shot counter and a shot counter. So total shot and then shot counter. This one actually, uh, we reset the whole system. So the total shot count can be reset if you reset the whole system. Um, rate of fire and peak average all that fun stuff brightness this is bright as it can go um, if you see me press it I can turn it down it comes about 50% I did turn it on um, in the daytime and it was a little uh, it was a little dim when you're wearing a mask on trying to look at the screen in full sunlight on the full mode it was still a little dim but uh, you could read it you know, sitting down with your mask off just fine. Screen sleep option. It's got this annoying beep really loud that I don't like beeps, but we'll leave it on now so you can see it. Auto shut off. This is where you can check your uh, transducers right here. Um, you have to have it aired up and then you go here and you press the button in to select for it to process. It'll show an error because there is no uh, tank screwed on it and it's not seeing any processing whatsoever. So you gotta wait for that to process. And the system is going, we don't sense any error, what in the world's going on? I don't know what to do about this, yada yada. All right, so system service, you can make it so you wanna service it every certain amount of time. You can get in there and change what your choice is, you know, every 7,500 shots for the HPR reg or 100,000. So, bolt service, you can reset how long, you can exit that. Reset to default settings. And then you got these cool tr uh, training modes as well. Breakout drills, um, some other ones right there, how many reps. Alright, snapshot, rate of fire, training modes, um, statistics, 
to exit once you're in here you can click exit um, when you're down here you can scroll through the things to get out of this uh, area you click in and then you press it again and you hold it down that shuts it off and it saves it and then you can power it right back on again so pretty simple board really easy to use uh, very straightforward die says they're coming out with a lot of upgrades or uh, um, updates to it for whatever you guys want they're trying to see what the players want to do with this platform because it's so powerful the processor and the whole thing so if you have any ideas of things you want to play maybe play snake on your uh, die m2 while you're waiting in the dead box or uh, getting on the field yeah message them we'll see what they can do with it but uh yeah die m2 board real simple and easy fun to use hold down the power for two seconds and the gun turns off All right, we're gonna get into the weight and ergonomics section of this video. I have the Die M2 here in my hands and with me a bunch of pretty much every other high-end gun that's been made or released in the last few years. And I'm just going to describe a little bit of how they feel in the hands compared to each other so that you can get an idea of what you like. For example, if you like the way the LV1 feels, I'm going to compare how this feels in comparison to that so that you can know if this is something you may or may not like before you even get your hands on the marker. First thing we're, what we're going to do is we are going to weigh this. We're weighing the gun with the stock barrel, all of them, because that's what they come with and it's part of the gun. And here on the scale, the Die M2 comes in at 1 pound 15.4 ounces, so that is really light a huge difference let's see this uh, DM 15 comes in at two pounds 4.3 ounces so almost five ounces heavier um, that's a significant weight difference for sure <clears throat> I'm gonna take the shocker one of the lightest guns on the market one pound 11.4 ounces so this one is still about four ounces lighter um, than the uh, M2. This gun is really light. Arguably, some people say too light, um, but really light. The Geo 3.5, 2.5 ounces. The Geo CS1 we just did in our video is 2.5. 2 pounds, 2.4 ounces. The LV1.1, 2 pounds, 1.4 ounces. Lux OLED, 2 pound, 2.4 ounces. Clone 5, 2 pound, 1.5 ounces. Got a Bob Long Onslaught, one pound, 15.7 ounces. So pretty light gun. I've always liked them. And then the Vanquish 2, two pound, 5.6 ounces. So uh, probably the heaviest gun here. So right there, that shows that this gun is pretty much lighter than most guns out there. So if you like a really light gun, the Die M2 is a very considerable option for you. In the hands, um, let's look at the length a little bit. Compared to the DM15, it almost has the same exact length of the gun. The foregrip, I'll show you right here, or the rear grip is thinner on the M2. The hourglass frame is more exaggerated, and so it's a very, uh, very small in the hands. The foregrip is a little thinner as well on the M2 than it is on the DM15. A lot of you have probably held the DM15, so I want you to think of a much lighter 
um, smaller in the hands, not lengthwise, but smaller in the frames, less bulky at the bottom part of it, uh, version of it, and that's the best way to get an idea. The Clone 5 is a little longer than the gun. This is what the frames look like. Different uh, cut of the frame. The Bob Long Onslaught is a shorter gun, as you can see. The weight is very similar to the same on these two guns. The back is almost the same, the layout, it's just a little more stretched out on the M2. So if you like Bob Long guns, uh, the, the, the layout and length of it is pretty similar. Let's do the LV 1.1. The LV 1.1 is longer. Of course, the poppet versus spool back is very different as well. It's a little bit longer in the front, longer of a grip. The Geo 3.5. About the same length gun to gun. Um, the front, the Geo is a little bit longer. The feed neck sits a little forward. You see the frames have a different cut. It's much more drastic with the ultralight frame. The Vanquish, which is a long gun, one of the longest guns. See the Vanquish feed neck sits farther forward. The foregrip sticks a little farther. The back cap on the M2 sticks back farther. The frame is very different feel. We got the Lux Olin, which was one of the first guns to come out with that uh, longer design. The foregrip sticks out longer on the M2. And if you see the frame is just drastically different right there. Um, so that is really just a very big difference. The uh, last gun is the Shocker RSX, which feels tiny comparatively, even though the weight isn't a huge difference. I mean, a few ounces, but you see the foregrip's longer. Um, the frame does have similarities in the shape and the curve of it that's probably the closest in resemblance to it so what i would say about the m2 is the m2 is longer in it than the hands it is a long gun it's not the longest but is uh, a little bit longer than most some things like the uh, clone 5 are a little bit longer in the hands a very thin um, contoured shape for the back um, the hourglass frame, how it's thinner towards the bottom, and then right here to wrap your hands around the grip and the way the pistol grip. Everybody that has held it uh, has liked it, except for maybe one or two people who said they liked the thicker DM15 frames. Um, a lot of people says it feels like holding a real gun pistol grips, and I think that's kind of what they went for in the hands. So holding it like this feels good. Your pinky can sit right underneath here, which feels really good. Thumb over it or down below. It doesn't poke you at all right here. This is uh, pretty smooth in this gap. Your hand can fit down here, whether you're shooting one-handed, two, whether you bring your hand off. It just feels really uh, good. The grips are gummy, um, a little softer than some of the other ones out there. The CS1 is uh, much thicker area of the frame and so that's what some people have been asked so the big difference between these two is like the cs1 is thicker than most any gun here it's a very different feel ergonomically same thing with the m2 it's a uh, much more drastic cuts and curves in it than most guns out there but very light gun very pointable in the hands you can grip it very well it has some good ergonomics nice spacing on it 
you can point well with it. Just all in all, a great feeling gun ergonomically for, from Dai, and I think a lot of people are gonna be very impressed with it. What's up guys, this is Dan at yourpvfriend.com. We have the new Dai M2. We're gonna do the efficiency test on it right now. We have the 688 barrel back. It comes with two, so we got options. So stock barrel back, 688. Um, we're gonna shoot PSP 12.5 ramping. And we have a Ninja tank with a 40, just under 4,500 fill. It's not hot, so it's a cold fill. We filled it up, let it cool down, and then filled it up again. So it's sitting right at 4,400 PSI. And we are going to shoot it. Making sure settings are correct. Alrighty. Here we go. Pod number one throw this extra pot away, so pot number one. Two eighty eight. Two eighty eight. Two ninety three. Two eighty two. And we shall begin. We will spot check it with the efficiency as something against my spire, it's sputtering just a little bit, but it's shooting good. That's five. I'm not seeing any drop off, but we will show you just in case. 294, 288, or 280, 286, 287. Let's see, three, two, 
six. Three's on eight. Plus or minus three. It's dropping off. Let's see. 266, 275, plus or minus 20. There we go. 242, 240, 220. Yep. Alright, that's good. That's a ball. empty so that was 12 pods let's count them two four six eight ten twelve on a ninja this is an SLP that was shooting 44, 4500 PSI, shooting at 295. So that's actually, uh, I think that's way better than it was current or recently beforehand. So that's a pretty good efficiency test. Die M2.
All right, guys, Die M2 conclusion time. We just finished filming and recording all that footage for the Ultimate Gun Review. If you watched through the whole thing, you probably have your own opinion now, and that's awesome. If you have skipped through our quick link section to the end to see the conclusion, I'm gonna hit on the key points for you right now. I have had about three weekends of play with this myself, handing it into people's hands, playing with myself, letting my team use it before I have uh, done the full reviews. And so here we go. First, I'm gonna say is if you are a die fan, if you love die guns and you have beforehand, you are going to love this marker. It shoots like a DM, it's very smooth, arguably a little smoother and quieter than beforehand, but they fixed all the little issues that uh, they have found wrong with it that people have complained about and listened to a lot of the um, suggestions that people have given and gave people those. Um, so first, some of the highlights. They now have an OLED board and not only do they have an OLED board is this is one of the nicest OLED screens in paintball, one inch big. The electronics is amazing. You can upload your own pictures. You can edit so many things, the views. It is a, truly a nice screen. They have internal pressure sensors inside of it, which means you can digitally read the pressure of your LPR and your HPR. That is real nice, so you can actually tune your marker and sweet spot it by digitally reading at it. No more guessing three and a half turns, which is pretty crucial to the smoothness and a great operation of a die gun. They fixed small issues like the on-off ASA, which they've had issues with for a long time. It hasn't been super strong. The feed neck has been fixed. The weight of the gun, this gun is way lighter than the previous years. They've really reduced a lot of weight on this thing. It's now one of the lightest guns in paintball. The way it feels in the hands, it's even thinner than the other ultralights. If you like the ultralight frame, you'll probably really like this. It's a little bit thinner in the hand, so kids or people with small hands really liked it. Although it does have a good length and overall fill. The efficiency, we did out of the box on a 7745 fill in our efficiency test, and we got 12 pods, which is a tournament level marker. That's really good. Uh, you can't, can't really complain about that. That's nice. They fixed little things like the engine on the DM14s didn't pull out very easily. The trigger is now magnetic trigger. I preferred springs, but I always chopped the springs a lot. This one has a lot of adjustment on there, so a lot of people will probably really like that. Trigger spring um, comes with two barrel backs. It's something a lot of people I heard ask for a while with the die guns, a 688 and 684. The cases I thought were horrible in the past. This case is arguably one of the best cases in paintball. The really nice uh, O-ring chart with it. You know, the lube and parts kit and all that fun stuff. Um, so that's all real good. The negatives, there's not a whole lot of things negative to say about the gun. Um, I'll say this little, uh, jewel in the back has already started to wear out on us so it's not silver anymore it's kind of rubbed off that's been pretty common with die jewels I'm not sure how long these will last or not but I've heard people complain about that um, the eye pipe is stronger which is something they fixed I personally don't like the eye pipe system I'd rather have eye covers uh, to, to be able to use I think potentially the eye pipe might be a little too loose. It just pulls out so easily. Um, although I tried to bang it around and couldn't get the eye pipe to fall out. If you do stick a swab in there in the middle of a game and pull it out, you may pull out the eye pipe without realizing it, but it is stronger now. Um, the regulators, the gun does operate at a lower pressure. It is arguably smoother and quieter than the DM15 and 14 before it. It's supposed to run at 20% less uh, operating pressure and dwell. Now with a lighter gun, you would expect more kick, but with those uh, pressures and uh, stats being down, you do get a really smooth, quiet shot. It does shoot like a DM, kind of the same uh, shot trajectory as the DMs are beforehand. So if you like that, um, you'll really like this. If that's something you weren't a fan of, this still shoots that same way. 
the screen is real nice it I, I didn't have any problems I did see a few people get bunkered with it or smack the gun on the ground with diving no problems with the screen it's got a real nice plastic case um, I expect some of them to break eventually die is warranting them for one year and they are replaceable off the board so uh, same thing if you want really nice electronics in a fat old screen this is a sport where it gets shot there's potential for it to be broken um, the ASA or the joystick is real nice the regulators are real good regulators they use the discs I do not like discs because players lose them all the time but they work very well so that's kind of a neutral for both um, one of the nice things is they're $1,400, so that's a little less than a lot of the other companies at the $1,500, $1,600 price point right now. And they do come with a lot with the uh, um, case, the extra barrel back, the big old screen. It, it, it does come with a lot for that price. Another nice feature is you can charge it with a micro USB, which everybody has with their cell phones except for you uh, unlucky Apple users. Um, I don't like rechargeable batteries, but it does have a rechargeable battery. It's supposed to be really good. I haven't had it long enough to test it. I've used it for three weekends. The battery has gone down lower, but it hasn't died on me. So three weekends and a lot of turning on and off, it's worked so far. So that's uh, pretty nice. The M2 is available at yourpbfriend.com to purchase or you can submit a trade form on our website and get a trade in quote. We give top dollar credit on all used guns towards a trade, it really the best in the industry. So you wanna be sure to check that out rather than dealing with selling it for less and that hassle, um, just trade it into us. You'll probably get more and it'll be a much smoother experience. Go ahead and check them out at yourpbfriend.com. Comment in the section, let us know what you think of this review. Subscribe, we're gonna come out with a whole bunch of other cool stuff, especially at Cup this next week which is probably right when this video is released and uh yeah thanks for watching guys